Hello everyone, it's me and welcome to a brand new video. Today we're gonna to be doing a shell challenge because a lot of you guys have been wanting and requesting me to do a shell challenge. So let's get to it. So I've just been on the gallery looking around at, uh, at different shells and I found this one, which I thought was kind of unique because it's very simple, but it's in the shape of a donut and I think it's an octagon as well. I don't usually like to build and furnish octagonal floor plans, so I thought this would be a little bit difficult. And I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to add any exterior walls, but I can add interior walls. So let's just see how we go, I guess. Big shout out to Kay Westy as well for creating this shell and be sure to download it as well if you wanna have a go at it. So first of all, let's just find a lot to place this on. I'm a little confused with the scale of it. Like how big is this place? Oh, look at that. It fits perfectly over here. And I don't know what kind of house we should do, but I think this is gonna be a lot more difficult than it looks because how are we going to roof this? Goodness gracious me. Okay, well, if I wanted to even try roofing this, we could do a couple of things. We could do the obvious big, octagonal roof. It kind of does work, but it looks a little off. The other thing is we could use some diagonal peaked roofs to kind of circle around it. Maybe that could look kind of cool. Let's maybe try and see what it would look like having a whole heap of these guys just kind of spread around it. This is definitely going to be an eccentric build. It is definitely not going to be a build for those who want to live a more conservative sim life. So this is for your sims who want to live in an experimental home. I'm kind of excited though. I'm excited to do something a little bit different. Oh my gosh, what is this? Now the good thing is with this roof, we can place it in between. So these little corners are still going to have a matching roof, which I'm really, really glad about. And then I don't think we're gonna be able to place any of these trims around the place, no. I don't mind it though, you guys. I think this is weird, but cool. I love how there's going to be maybe a middle courtyard. Maybe we can put a palm tree in the middle. <laughs> And I feel like we should already call this the donut house. Or maybe it's like a like a little windmill kind of kind of deal. Maybe we can put like a tropical plant in the middle like that. I actually love center courtyards in homes. I think it's a really lovely thing to to implement in your home design. And it's definitely something that feels like it's more rare and unique. And it's also kind of difficult to find a tree that's not going to intersect with any of the walls. Oh, actually that was much easier than I thought it was going to be. There we go. Just making a nice pathway around the house as well, just to kind of give it its own protective circle maybe to be kept within. It gives that sense of unity to the build as well if it's a circle inside of circle. Another thing that's kind of cool is that we could use these angled windows from Eco Lifestyle because they kind of go with the roof line. Uh, we could almost, well, essentially mirror what the roof is doing. I don't know if this is gonna look really bad, but you know what? It's just a time to experiment. This is the point of a build challenge, right? To, to live outside of your usual box-shaped house. I am liking the direction this is going in. As strange as it, as it is, I am liking it. Now for the front door, do we want just like a simple, basic, sliding glass door or do we want something a little more dramatic? This one does tie in nicely with the rest of the windows because it does have this cross section of the glass. I think I'm gonna go with this door. I think this door is kind of cool. All right, so I've done a little bit of landscaping around the side. I think it's, yeah, looking a little bit better, a little bit more finished, at least the exterior. And now we're gonna do the front. Oh, also we need a mailbox. Let's get maybe this uh, Oasis Springs looking one, just like that. And then on the interior, we've got a couple of doors going into this central part, uh, which I think is quite nice. And I was thinking maybe we should use this honeycomb kind of flooring uh, inside or tiling just for a change, because we often do the same kind of wood flooring for most of our builds. So now the next question is, how on earth do we turn this into a working floor plan? So if we were doing a tiny home, it exceeds the tiny home. So it's definitely not gonna be a tiny home. Uh, so this is a regular sized house, which means I think we should have at least one bedroom. So maybe the bedroom should be on the opposite side from the entrance. Oh gosh, and how on earth is this like, 
We can't even draw the diagonals in together. They're going to have to be somewhat of an odd shape like this. Uh, I do think we're going to have to probably have a little void in some of these spaces too. But let's see, maybe we should start with placing some furniture down just to get an idea of what actually will fit and how it will fit and if the Sims can get around it. If we have a master bedroom, I'm thinking that the bed may have to face into the courtyard, although it doesn't give them a whole lot of privacy. Maybe it could just sit right at the wall and the Sim could probably still get around. These are just some random items I'm placing down, but that could work. You could have the wardrobe over here, the bed here, and could we have an ensuite some way, shape or form? <laughs> Could there be two bathrooms here? Could we do a sneaky little main bathroom and ensuite bathroom? I think this can be turned into an ensuite here. Maybe quite a large luxurious one and we take out one of the windows here. This could have a couple of windows to get some natural light in. We could have one just long window like that. And I think the way that these Sims are going to get around the house is actually crossing through this central uh, courtyard area. This could also sit here. We could also have a guest bedroom here. And then the rest of this would need to be kitchen, dining, living, and a master bathroom, which we could probably put the master bathroom somehow in this little bit. So we would have, oh, this is gonna look really weird. <laughs> we could put the shower in the corner. I mean, I don't know if we can just kind of, oh yeah, we could kind of put it in like this and have your bathroom sink here. Now is this, we'll probably need to put the door right about there for them to get into. And then our next question is, is this area going to be able to fit in everything we need? And do we really want to have this massive window here? I don't think so. We should just put another singular window, maybe just here. I think the kitchen is the next most difficult part of this build. I like the idea of having an all black kitchen just to tie in with the windows. I'm thinking that we that we put it along this wall right here and make this window a little bit smaller. This window here could also be a big sliding door. And then if we have a dining table, where is this dining table going to go? Is it gonna fit in if we just placed it somewhere like, I don't know where the dining table is gonna sit. Okay, I've moved in the pancakes into this home and actually having moved some Sims in, I'm kind of loving this house more than I was before. Let's see if Bob can actually walk into the kitchen. Oh, he can get through there. Okay, okay. Now, can he get to the other side of the bed? So he'll go through the middle of here and he can actually get around the bed fully. All right, well, that's pretty good. They can get into the kitchen. It's not the most luxurious space, that we have uh, in any build. <laughs> like, I think it would look better if we had more of a gap there, but maybe if we get more of a straight table, uh, it'll work a little bit better. I mean, I'd just love to have the bench top extend. Or could we just move this wall like this, put this door here so it just kind of opens up that kitchen a little bit more? We can kind of work this counter around. This looks like it's very tricky business right here. And fitting it together like this. The other thing is, do we just not have a dining table and instead we just have stools you can sit on and eat from here? Do we even need a dining table? We probably don't. Cause I think it's either we have a dining table right as you walk in the door, which could be a little much that you walk into the dining table. Uh, we could just not have one here. One thing that we really do need is some lights in all of these spaces. But I do think that, you know, as a floor plan, this is definitely working. It can definitely become a nice looking home. And the other thing is, did we want this to be a lighter and brighter kitchen? I mean, I think that kind of looks a bit nicer. And did we want to have any details here that kind of separate the kitchen a bit more? Or do we keep it just open? In terms of the couches, I think we need to get a couch that is a clever design that's low. Otherwise, if it's too bulky, it's just going to, you know, dominate the whole space. So I'm thinking one of these would be probably our best option. What I like about these is they can be pieced together 
together to kind of give the illusion of a small L-shaped couch. And I like this, it looks a bit more modular. You know, maybe this is what is going to give us a little bit more room to have our actual dining table in here. Check this out, you guys. If we use this couch on an, on an angle, we can have a dining room space. And I think, let's see if Bob can get to this direction over here. Oh, well he cheated a little bit. Let's see if he can route around the couch. He can, he can actually get around that couch. The thing that is bothering me is this little overlap visual glitch. So I can probably just move this out a little bit to avoid that and it'll still work okay. So for a TV, we could go with this tiny living, kind of cool TV on the wall. We could have it on the wall like this, or we could just have a very clean looking TV and have it directly against the wall mounted. And I am a little bit tempted to have a fireplace. That's the other thing I would really like to have. Um, but I'm worried it's becoming a little bit too congested in here. I mean, I do like that we could put black walls around here as well, but I think we have to be careful that we don't overdo it. I'm also not liking what I'm seeing here with the flooring. As much as I love this flooring in this house, I don't like that the pattern is struggling. So maybe we should just go with these lighter floorboards to keep it simple. Yet another Scandinavian inspired house. <laughs> we can have fun though with some color on the walls. We can make it a little bit more crazy looking. I do like that there's mint in the cushions here so we can have a bit of fun with green colors. And we should definitely have a rug. Let's look so, for some rugs with green and purple in them. I think that's a bit much. This rug works quite well with our wall coloring. Sometimes I like to just color coordinate things and look at our different options. Ooh, that dark green's quite nice, but it doesn't quite work with what we've got. This is kind of cool. We could have a lot of fun with that rug. This university light can actually look quite modern in all black and quite sophisticated. So I'm gonna put a couple of those in and I'm wondering if we just keep these nice greeny colors uh, as our main palette type. I love this crisp white wall, just how it kind of matches the bench tops, even though it is quite plain. And I think we can probably get around with the blandness of this space by having some really bright paintings in here. A lot of our wall space is taken up by big windows, but maybe we could get rid of this window over here. Could we have a little, a little fireplace moment? I'm gonna just sit in the corner like this. That's actually pretty nice. I, I quite like how that's working out. I'm tempted to try some concrete in here too, to see if that makes the space look a little bit more interesting and helps show which rooms are separate to other rooms. This red wall is not working for me at all. I don't mind it, but I do feel like we're running into a bit of an awkward spot right here, having half concrete and half wood run through the door. The kitchen could just be separate. Oops, mucked that up a little bit. Actually, that works quite nicely. It's not too bad, not too bad. I'm actually thinking of sizing down these square paintings because they're very, very colorful and modern. And I think if we have two of them, they're going to be able to blend in nicely with the home. Might even use two of them layered a little bit or kind of twisted around. And this is where I wanna get some color in using some plants and fun little pots. So we can have a yellow one over there. We can have these like little smiley faced ones over here. I don't know if it's a good idea to have a plant next to a fireplace, but we're gonna give it a go anyway. Just a little trio here and we can color them in a couple of different ways too. A couple of these shelves as well that match the bench tops. I don't actually know if anything sits on top of them though. I think they're just purely decorative um, without any slots on them, which is a slight sh uh, shame. Might be nice to put a big mirror here as soon as you walk in the door. That might expand the space a bit. I love this one that leans against the wall. I think that's so pretty. Could actually add some blue into the kitchen that way as well. Ooh, and this other wall looks like it's asking for a third painting to be put here. Maybe a, s oh no, I was gonna say maybe a slightly smaller one, but that's gonna look so weird. Could put a wine glass here maybe, in one of these bright colors, if they can tie in with the other painting. I mean, it kind of works. I think it'll do there. 
Or we could do a classic Jerry picture. You can't go wrong with Jerry. Then another one of these plants here. Beautiful. Okay, this is the master bathroom. I've decided to go with some oranges in here. A little bit controversial, but I think it looks kind of cool. And I also made it a little bit smaller because I feel like this little space here, if we're lucky, we might be able to get some kind of wardrobe in here, which could make it look like a better use of space, I suppose. Oh, okay, this is, de <laughs> this is definitely not going to fit in there. Uh, I mean, we could maybe get, no, this, this isn't gonna fit either. What if we got, I feel like this from City Living, we could put two in here and I reckon the Sims can just fit down there and actually get into this little space. So yay, we have a wardrobe area that's somewhat tucked away in here. And maybe we could even make this wall a little bit darker. Oh my gosh, where did I just copy the whole freaking door? It's like a little hidden space in there. And we could put some carpet in the bedroom. I think most people tend to prefer to have a bit of carpet under their feet in bedrooms. I have to say, I love these beds that came with Eco Lifestyle. I know I've been using them nonstop, but they're so nice and they just look way better than the other ones that we have already in the game. Yeah, in my humble opinion anyway. This looker is really nice with this sage green color, so we can actually have a little bit of, bit of fun in this bedroom with making it look all pretty. Can make this a black wall maybe here and here. This could be a nice mirrored wall too. This will open up this, the bedroom to appear a bit bigger. I don't know, maybe we can have just like a cool feature light over here, a black one, like a, a little reading light. Maybe we could have it on both sides. Just don't want it to be too near the head. Are we gonna actually get away with fitting another table in here? Let's see if Bob Pancakes can now get around the other side of the bed. Oh, he totally can! Yay! This bedroom is actually turning out really nice. I love how there's room for a bookshelf. Uh-oh, I just realized the bookshelf's clipped into the window a little bit, so I'm just gonna move it. I wonder if I can kind of just move it slightly in front of the window like this with the pile of cushions in the corner. It's actually an irregular shaped room, but it's a pretty cool looking room. And then we've just got to do this bedroom right here, or we could make this into a skill building room or office. I think seeming as though this house is a little bit eccentric, maybe we should make this a creative space. Because I do feel like the Sims that would live here are definitely creatives. So this can be a music space with a few different types of guitars that they can choose from. They can uh, mix some music beats over here in the corner. And maybe this room could be a very Scandinavian looking room. Maybe it's like a full wood room in here. It can be like on the holiday where they make a whole heap of film tracks, like film advertising and film trailers. So they have all these film posters on the wall. Actually, let's give it kind of like a 70s vibe in here. All right, so I have finished this build, our donut build. It's definitely a very creative and like I said, dynamic and eccentric build, but I think it's a lot of fun. I'm actually really pleased with how it's turned out. As odd as it is, I think it actually works quite well. So let's go in and have a look at our creatives home. Uh, let's walk through this front door into our interior space. And to the left, we have our kitchen. And to the right, we have our dining space, which we managed to fit in as well as a living space. So over here is the kitchen. I love how you just need to walk around this diagonal bench. And over here is just the master bathroom. I've got some nice green colors in there. Lots of black plumbing as well. Kitchen was kept very, very plain, uh, but I think we've made up for that with some bright wallpapers here. Nice, simple dining table. Oh, Eliza's yeah. showing off her living space, even complete oh, yeah. with a fireplace. Lots of light coming through as well. And you can go through this little area where you could put a barbecue or whatever you want. You can go through to the home studio in here, which has a lot of musical stuff around. And I decided to put a hot pink mirror in here. I don't know, it just felt like a little bit of a surprise color in there. 
or you can just go through the door there as well. You could move that door if you wanted to. And then through here is Bob's bedroom. He's looking pretty cool in his winter wear, uh, but there's a mirror over in the corner to give the illusion of more space. There is actually a window here. I'm not sure why that window disappeared for a second, but it's like a triple window area, uh, which I think looks really nice with the player tested bed. The Sims can get around that bed. And then there's a wardrobe space in there. And then they've got their ensuite in here. So it's a two bedroom, a one bedroom, two bathroom home, a uh, fit for creatives or even someone who has one child, they can fit in there as well. And it would be the perfect house to extend on a bigger lot as well, because it's such a weird shape. You could have a nice straight square build coming off of it and it would look really nice. Um, but anyway, you guys, I'll upload this to the gallery. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. Duck, duck.